share. Hello, hello, hello. Going to share the screen real quick. Do you see a PowerPoint? Yes, awesome. we do. Exactly what I need you to see. All right. Well, hi, I am Charlene and I am an associate instructor at Learn Academy. And that's an educational institution that combines knowledge and career development to create compassionate, curious, and professional web developers. Um, we're led by some strong women over there. Um, the CEO is Chelsea Kaufman, and our director of academic experience is Sarah Proctor. So um, I'm just, I'm thankful for this supportive space called Women Who Code. Thank you for allowing me to fill this Zoom box for the next hour or so. And it's my pleasure to speak to you about the power of of accessibility and creativity with P5JS. So tonight I will discuss the history of P5JS, the philosophy, show you a couple of applications, and then do a live demo towards the end. So P5JS is a JavaScript library that transforms a web browser into an pretty much an artistic sketch pad and it and turns code into a paintbrush. This tool helps you create very interactive and in interactive visuals. And it's also what it reignited my passion for coding. So I started coding in late August at a weekend bootcamp called Jumpstart with Learn. So as soon as the words, hello world, and by the way, I talk with my hands. My hands are just excited about coding and I use them all the time. So I'm gonna let them have their opportunity to be in this presentation. <laughs> so um, yeah, as soon as I saw those words, hello world, come across the screen, I could smell jet fuel because I was just so excited, just excited. I, I, I was just flying high with this excitement because, and then that excitement led me to joining the boot camp. And I had the great instructor, Sarah Proctor, and Austin, who's here, Austin Walker, who um, taught me many things, many things there. Um, so my expected output was to become a great web developer. I was that input. Learn accepted me as a beginner. They showed me all the tools to become a responsible web developer. They showed me the syntax. They um, demonstrated a workflow. They allow me to practice. They set a brave space so I can talk about my concerns. Everything was right there. However, I started using other tools called self-doubt. I was comparing myself with other people because, oh my gosh, I did 20 lines. They finished this in two lines. What's wrong with me? Uh, and then my expectations, because my idea of a web developer wasn't somebody who got error codes. You know, I just had this vision and of course the imposter came creeping in. So all those tools I was using and they definitely didn't taught me, teach me to use those, but I decided it. And that mindset really burnt me out. Like those charcoal crumbs at the bottom of the barbecue pit, I was burnt. I was just, I was very tired, you know. But nevertheless, I used some sweat, a lot of tears, talking to the instructors and in long nights and I just continued pushing through. I mean, I had to, I even wrote down a sheet of paper that I need to finish this program. So I wrote it in, so I knew I had, I had to finish this. But Tech Talk time came and I knew I did not want to end, let my last thing be me being burnt out. So I just needed to find something fun for myself, but still technical so I can feel, fulfill that assignment. And I started thinking about things I like. I like poetry, I like art, animation. So I sat down with my best friend, Google, and searched making animation with code. And these words, um, happy coding, just drew my attention. I clicked the link. There was many, it was a tutorial website and there were many languages on there. However, I gravitated to P5JS because it was based on JavaScript. And that was a language I'd learned in bootcamp. And by selecting that creative code base, 
I was allowed to escape from my judgment center of saying how I should be, what I should be doing. And I went back to that space of creativity and curiosity. And I found myself back in the awe and wonder of coding. So to speak about P5JS, I gotta tell you the history. And it all began with processing. So um, in 2001, Casey Reeves and Ben Fry, they, cre they created um, processing, which is a highly visual programming language based on Java. In the early 2000s, Java was, was the thing to do to, and it delivered the exciting graphical content for the internet. Whereas the early phase of JavaScript was known as Mocha at that time. And it was not thought of as anything significant enough to carry those, those um, larger coding tasks. And just a quick summary, there were some sneaky naming tactics and some competitive competition going on and some guidelines that had to be laid down for JavaScript to become popular back in that time. And John Riesig answered the call of this change into JavaScript by creating processing.js. So a user could code with that processing syntax and then use processing.js to translate that Java-based code into JavaScript. But that technique did make the syntax a bit more problematic. So an alternative to processing.js was created in 2013 by Lauren McCart, and that's that JavaScript-based programming language, P5JS. And then Casey, I'm going to destroy her name, but Casey came along and created a text editor that um, complemented P5JS and it's called P5JS Editor. So, of course, when the creators naturally, they created processing, so they wanted a domain called processing, but discovered that name was used. So, yeah, that error. So they made the original domain processing instead of S's, they had five. And eventually they um, acquired that processing domain. So it, uh, it became processing.org. However, um, the name processing was abbreviated P5, and that's where the P5JS throws reference to. All right, so P5JS does a little more than just throw homage back to that name. It follows this philosophy that this floss philosophy about free, library open source software. So the, found, the Processing Foundation really wants to make coding accessible for artists, designers, educators, and beginners. They see software as a link between thinking and making. And that quest together, this new technical skill set is transformed into a creative and explorative process by this free open source software. All right, so P5 um, is definitely backed by the processing foundation. You can make items as simple as a smiley face or even more larger applications. And I'd like to showcase a couple of those applications that they have. So um, there's a couple um, programmers out there, developers out there. Um, one of the showcases is teaching people how to sign language, to do sign language. Okay, can you see my screen? Well, okay, uh, let me pull up a little. Okay, so let me get in. So it's just seeing if you're doing the letters correctly. All right, this. And they can make games with this. Oop, went back. So, yeah. So there's many applications you can do with P5 besides just making a picture.
All righty. So the setup, the setup is one of the easiest processes I've seen out there. Um, I've included the links. Um, I'll add them also towards the end. But um, these different links will lead you to one of the main tools that added the text editor. You have links to references, and then there's tutorials out there, and you can search for it pretty much. You can still do. All righty, time for a live demo so you can see all of this in action. So. I'm going to do something we normally do and learn like an icebreaker. I'm gonna add some animation to it, uh, get some snow going, also get the words flying around to allow the user to interact with it. All right. So the text editor, as soon as you click on the link, you don't have to download anything. It just right away gives you the link to the P5JS text editor. It's, it comes prepackaged with written code. And it is pretty, it's like any other web project. When you click this arrow over here, you'll see all the different files. It has that index HTML, the CSS, JavaScript. All righty. So the different functions that are built with the P5JS library, you have your setup. The setup is just that beginning of this P5 programming. Um, it executes right away with the P5 application. And it contains a code that defines the initial state of your sketch. It's gonna give you the canvas size, so it's telling the width and the height. The draw function, it runs after setup and that it executes, it just updates everything with on the screen. So this button right here, this allows you to see the preview. So press the play and now we, it's prepackaged with this canvas and we told it the color to display. So um, color goes through zero to 255, showing on the different gray scales when you just place in one number. All right, let's get some words on this screen. Go over to the index HTML. And as you can see, everything, all the links that you need, all everything is already provided. It's, pre-written pre code to start this canvas, this project. So in order for me to have the head up here, we already have it sectioned off. So I'll just put it in. Icebreaker, Oop, put an H1, I'll make it H1. Let's have some big words. And due to time constraints, I have some stuff typed up, so I'll put it in there. But as you can see, um, as long as you update the HTML, it's going to provide everything for you. Let me add my other line. Since I know I want the user to interact, I'm going to pass a line just to let them know what to do. And I'll use an unordered list. So because I want my unordered list to appear under this canvas or the animation I'm gonna put on the canvas, I will run it on, go to 15 and a half and drop a new line. Let me fix my indentation. Okay. So I want to add an image, just as with any other um, 
application. So on the sketch files, you have options to create folders. So I'll create an image folder. And then I can say upload. Let me make sure I have my... Okay. Share this space over here. So on images, I can tell it I want to upload a file. So I can see it's pretty easy to use, very user-friendly. Okay, so now that I've uploaded my image to this project, when I go to sketch.js, I have to run a couple built-in functions. So first steps with this. So I would get all this information from the reference, but because I researched it, I'm gonna put it up here. I can show you where it lives or would you like to see the reference? Sorry. To me, silence means no, I didn't see. Sorry, my dog was barking. Was barking. <laughs> uh, up to you, Shailene. Okay. So, um, with this, we um, declare, just declare that variable, and I'm gonna call the variable IMG to stand for the image. On the setup, so I have, I'm, actually I have to do a preload function that runs before the setup and the draw in order to pull in my image. So I have that function built here. Space in. Couple more things we have to do. So now the image, this variable is has been assigned to my penguin image that's living over in the image folder. So now I'm going to use the background so I can have this background, this image as my background. And I'll just pass that variable in instead of a number for color. Now I have my image, a little penguin waving to everybody. And this canvas, if you go in and change the dimensions, it will automatically update over here. For instance, if I want it to be a little bit wider, just say 600 and now. All right. So I did promise you snow. So in order to do our snow there, um, we're going to use for loops. And that is the beauty of P5.js. Like, yes, I'm putting all these images up here, but it's still teaching me coding. I'm just having fun doing it. And I can manipulate it and have this quick feedback because everything is built in here. All right, so I'm going to make another, just an empty array to hold all the values I'll be making. And you have to declare what variables up top. I'm gonna to use snow. Curly's the square brackets. And again it's JavaScript based so you'll be using a lot of JavaScript syntax to cover this. Okay, so I'm going to use a for loop to create some random y coordinates for myself. And I built it already. And we're going to pass that in our setup. And use another for loop within my draw setup to allow those, this snow to fill up. So first I have to tell it a color. Let's 
So I tell the color to fill it. And then I have a for loop that's going to assign my x coordinates or my x values. So then each circle is a command that we run will appear at different heights in different at the different coordinates to give you a snowfall effect. All righty. So I, I have this action up here because I wanted the user to be able to um, just click the keyboard and make words move around. So we're going to use top, topo topography animation. And it's going to use class objects and custom components to animate these words. All right, so declare another empty array up top to hold those values. And because I don't want it to change, I'm using cons. All right. So let me go get my code. All righty. So this setup is just that flow path. You have to bounce around a couple of different areas, but you begin in the setup to state what information you want it to eventually showcase over in draw. So in my setup, go drop a new line. I have this string that I'm titled STR. Welcome aboard, time to get to know each other because this is an icebreaker. So now I'm gonna switch this into an array to separate the words. So when I do um, run the rest of the function is going to isolate each word based on its index. Right. So I'm just going to copy the rest in there. Let me put some more spaces between here because I know if I'm struggling to find the spaces. Is that better, everybody? Do I need to make it bigger for you? It's good. Good, okay. And over. It's going to be upset with me. As you can see, it does have a console on the bottom that gives you those different error codes. So, all right, let's go down to draw and put in that word class as well as the other functions I need. One's word and one's words might be the problem. Oh, I I have more code to put in there. It's just upset because I hadn't put um, everything in there. It's not going to work just yet, but thank you. I got very much this. Okay. 
So the word it was looking for, it needed that class because I was making objects. So I was telling it to make a new instance of this class back up at the word. on this line, but I didn't have a class yet. So I created it in the draw. And then of course you have your custom function. So it, this, the with the reference and of course with the tutorials, it shows you all those different concepts that we do learn in JavaScript. And now based on that, I can, let me show you where it's at. So right now I have a function in there called key press. This, this built-in function looks for any keys that a user presses. And in this case, I say, if you press anything other than R, then spread the words. That means move the words around. Else, which if you press that R, you'll get word to reset, to make everything return to its position. So let me click over here. So right now I'm pressing T and now my words. And that's just built on, of course, I had to do a tutorial to follow, but that's just built on having these custom made functions in there. And then when I press R, it resets. Cool. Maybe I could have built it out more, but I was looking at the time. I want to make sure, but um, I can add more things just, just as you can use the functions that are built in with P5.js, I can do regular CSS styling and it'll still respond because we always like to have things centered. So I can tell it X line center. And it'll respond to it. And then always that troublesome when you're using those bullets. They could have did better in like with those line items, the little bullets for there. But hey, I can change that up if I wanted to. And we have time. So let me add some more animation to this. And I have made some, so I'll change things around. Okay. So I always like that typewriter effect where things just go across. So I did look, I looked up a way to do that CSS. And I also include those references that I use to um, get the different type of animations. Okay. Change it to the CSS. So I can just as um, with CSS, it goes, look at those HTML tags. It's gonna go over there to, and you can update those based on that. You can also pass in custom attributes. You have those class attributes. So let me go over there and pass in this typewriter. Let me pause it so it can be very dramatic and you won't see that update right away. All right, so I, Want, wanted my un, um, my unordered list to go across that typewriter effect. So, you know that beautiful saying, when in doubt, div it out. That's what we're gonna do today. And what did I call it again? And CSS land typewriter, okay.
All righty. Oh, you know what? I want to change those bullets. Do I have time? Cool. And change my mind. Let's put some star for it. And then I'll leave it alone. And then I'll open it up for questions. I will leave it alone, I promise. Let's see. Oh, I need to upload that image. That is what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna upload another image and I already saved this. All right, now I'm gonna play it again. All righty, I will leave it alone. You know, when you start doing CSS, you get so excited and they will, you could spend a lot of hours on CSS. So yeah, that was just my demo on the different things you can do with um, P5.js and it's very user-friendly. Um, the tutorials, let me go to the P5. So there's different references, um, the happy coding link that I had up there. But you can um, put in there, hey, I wanted to do something with text. And I'll give you the different options, the different built-in functions that they have. And it gives you examples. I do like the happy coding tutorial site. So it has the different tutorials in there. It teaches you about P5.js. There's also more about processing and processing. Uh, uh, yeah, there's Java, all the different things you can learn off of here if you wanted to just expand beyond P5.js. Okay. So uh, these are my list of resources that I use as I stated, p5js.org, um, the processing foundation, all these will give you links to that P5 as well as other languages that they have to just bring about um, a different way of coding. You know, we have so many different ways to code. And there's just so many different ways that you can learn the coding too. So there's many opportunities and resources out there. And of course, there's always opportunities for you to give back in the space. You know, you could go over there to these different orgs, the um, open source sites. They always have opportunities for you to do a meetup, workshops. You can contribute to the code base on GitHub. And uh, there are you know, if your company is interested, there's bootcamp students that need internship experience, need these real world applications and to see how a company goes, such as Learn Academy. We are definitely um, accepting internship opportunities, or you can even talk, go to these bootcamps so they can see these outstanding people out there, such as Learn Academy. You can come over and sit on a panel with us. I mean, yeah. So there's so many opportunities out there and I do thank you for your time. And I'm gonna open it up for questions. Thank you, this, Charlene, that was amazing. Live demos are always super brave and yours <laughs> went off without a hitch. So that was awesome to watch. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, if anyone has any, oh, I see Mina has your hand up. 
Yeah, thank you for that. I super appreciated the history lesson on it too. Um, Cause I think it's pretty cool to be reminded of like the people and the contributors that sort of maintain um, things that are free tools. Um, and something that I noticed and maybe I'm, you know, making an assumption, but it seems that the, that there are a lot of women who are <laughs> uh, responsible for maintaining it now. And so I was wondering if that like had any influence in like you choosing this or was that sort of just like a happy coincidence? It was a happy coincidence. Um, like I said, I was, I just, when I searched, uh, just wanted to have some fun because I had put all that pressure on myself for trying to be perfect, which I found out it can't be perfect. Error messages are there for a reason because people make mistakes. It wasn't there because only one person made a mistake. So I just had to give in. Okay, I'm going to make this error and then I'm going to learn something new. So, yeah. But yeah, it was, I was like, what? What? Okay. All right. I like this even more. Oh, looks like Jessica has a question. Um, Jessica, would you like to unmute to read your question or would you like me to read it for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can. Um, yeah, I can read out my question for Charlene. Yeah, I was wondering if you uh, had like the opportunity to personally use this library in any projects. And yeah, I thought that the sign language demo was really cool. So I was curious about other real world applications of the library? Oh yeah, um, the link if, I'll send it up, no, I went to the wrong one. If you see showcase that um, they have events where they tell people from all different countries to go in, use the P5JS language. Um, they have this every year, um, I have to see the next time they update it, but, and see the different projects on there. So yeah, they have several different projects that people send in. Um, of course, it's not limited to that, but though, um, if you go on the website, it will show you those different applications that are out there. And then if you wanna see the older ones, go to archive and I'll show you. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, well, the, the showcase looked like um, it was pretty cool to browse through. I imagine that with um, like a visual sort of animation drawing library, there could be a lot of different, like really interesting, cool looking um, demos that you could do with it. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, that icebreaker thing, we do have one to learn, and I actually snuck, snuck it in on our recent cohort that we did <laughs> to um, just show some stuff. Yeah, Denise. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Do you mean like uh, you actually had other people use it as an icebreaker? Uh, yeah, well, when we were, um, when I had to introduce the icebreaker, actually like, okay, I hope this works. And um, I had the web page pull up and to show all of the information. So yeah. But yeah, it I love it. The animation that it adds, the user interaction you can really draw in a user. So I'll continue sneaking in different P5JS projects without Austin knowing. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Feel free to write in chat or raise your hand. Or unmute and ask. Um, I had a, a quick question. So how much JavaScript do you need to know before using p5.js? Well, because it's teaching you none, just know, oh, this is JavaScript. And then they'll start teaching like um, the tutorials. Let me go to the tutorial. 
it starts out explaining coding, even talking about computers, it goes through the history. So it just gives you that overview and yeah. Gives you a link to the text editor. So even on the processing foundation, they give you links. So you will not, you will never know where the link is not because it's in all these spaces. So you always have access to the links. Um, I have a question. So yes. I see that you're doing the the coding on the on the on your browser. But is it like VS Code where you can install it on your desktop and you push? Like, how do you actually like deploy your project? That's a good question. Great question. So um, there is on the reference. Oh, I clicked off of it. Let me go back to the reference. So you can um, download the information. It gives you those steps. It's just that it comes in the browser. Uh, when you click the link, it, it just automatically comes up in your browser, but you can deploy. So you can save it. You'll have to sign up, but you can save. I can save this right now. And then I can tell it to, I wanna share. And it gives you different links that you can send out and they can, people can have access to see. Here, I'll send this to you. I can put it in chat right now. Oh, I don't see chat because I told my Zoom bar if I, let me bring it back. You should be able to click that if I haven't lied. You should be able to click that and have it. Yeah, it, okay. it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along similar lines, I mean, is it easy to, I mean, I could see you could just copy the code and integrate it with the project, but I mean, have you like, you know, done say a GIF or an animation that then you have an existing project that you're incorporating it into, or can you, I don't know, is there a way to push to, get from the here or anything like that yes um actually i tried to create a wait let me move this zoom bar let me pull up I'm going to my GitHub, but one moment. I got to go here over here. Okay. Under my repo, you can go to it on the Sun Kiss Queen. I have a P5 sketch tutorial that um, I was able to just pull those files. Well, I saved, when I saved it, I was able to pull the files over and just drop them into GitHub and then build it up. Um, there's instructions on GitHub. I'm a little, was a little new to it. So <laughs> but yeah, you can certainly pull those files that you have over here on, um, once you save it, put them onto GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the easiest way to then get it someplace where you could, you could marry it to, to something you maybe already made. And you're like, I want to add a penguin to snow. <laughs> By the way, this was just so much fun. I loved your presentation. And oh, thank <laughs> you. Thing, I also kind of wondered, um, have you, because I've, um, 
Oh, was I even sharing the screen? Huh? Was I sharing my screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. The box. I don't see the box. <laughs> Sorry. No, the, the, the screen's being shared. So okay. Yeah, I think it looks good. Um no, I was gonna ask, have you tried um like how much, like, so I've made some gifts. I used to work as a rare books librarian. And so I would make all these animations in Photoshop where I would like cut out different layers of an image and make things move around. Like it'd be cats in the medieval manuscript and then they play around the letters or something like that. So I'm thinking about things I've done in Photoshop that are so time consuming in Photoshop. <laughs> so I wondered if you had played at all with having like layers of an image that maybe you Photoshop out and you move around or warping things and stuff like that. I don't know how far you've gotten into uh, uh, Yeah, I did see that and I had to calm myself down because, you know, with that CSS, I was like, okay, I'm going to have so much time. All kinds of ways but much yeah, they, I read a they, few <laughs> <laughs> they do have um, where um, there's a tutorial about actually making your animation appear like it's moving. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's so many tutorials out there. Um, there's either they even have a link to a YouTube. There's a guy, oh, I forgot his name, but very enthusiastic, enthusiastic teacher. Um, but he shows you how to um, do all, all of those things you just stated. So it's it's amazing. All the I'll definitely be looking at that you can do. And it's the same concept. I was like, oh my goodness. This is class. We're doing classes, we're doing objects, we're doing all this, we're making functions, we're doing for loops, so yeah. So it's a matter of just tapping into how you learn and there's space for it out there. Sounds amazing. Um, I had a question. Does it work with other JavaScript um, things like React or other or Angular, those frameworks? You know, I will have to do my research. Um, um, but I'm sure there's there's probably things out there, but I can't speak on it, um, on how they incorporate those other ones. But I'll be happy to look that up and get back to you. Any other questions? Oh, it looks like Jessica says, I saw a React wrapper for this library. So it looks like it's possible. Cool. Thanks for looking that up, Jessica. Yeah, I was kind of curious as well. Um, yeah, it seems like the wrapper would, um, yeah, basically take a canvas of using P, um, P5, and then like the React app could then somehow interact with it that way. I'm not too sure how it works, but yeah, I was curious as well. <laughs> Jessica sounds like she's gonna do a tech talk on it. <laughs> um, just, just interested in learning new things. Yeah. And yeah, I find front-end development to be pretty interesting because there's always, like a lot of new stuff going on. Yeah, there's so, so many things out there. But um, I found if you learn one language, it's easier to learn the other ones because it's still doing, dealing with that same type of um, data type input, the numbers, strings, arrays. So just have to learn how to say it over there in that, in that land, in that language. So true. Um, I'm going to pause the recording then, but thank you so much, Charlene. Thank you. Nice I really talk. appreciate it. Thank you so much.